Hello and welcome back to Bristol on day three of the women's test between England and India. Um, it's dry at the moment. It's it's also low looking pretty dodgy. It's, it's quite chilly um, and the weather forecast is not great. On the other hand the weather forecast was not great yesterday and we didn't lose any time so who knows. Um, we're going into this uh, third day. India are on 187 for five trailing by 209. Um, so, you know, potentially set up quite nicely. Mm -hmm. um, now, this time yesterday we talked about the declaration and um, I suggested that England might want to even declare overnight. Crazy, I know. <laughs> um, although a few other people on Twitter did kind of suggest that as well, so I wasn't completely alone in my craziness. Um, Raf, what happened in the end and was, was that the right decision? Yeah, interesting. Um, so Heather Knight ignored both of our pleas. Um, she ignored your plea to um, to declare overnight, um, and she also um, carried on after lunch, um, despite the fact that I said that they should have um, put India in before lunch. Um, however, um, you know, it looks like Heather Knight played the blinder. I think um, there were people saying that she should have actually um, declared a bit later than she did. In fact, um, because um, England were nine down and and. Um, and Sophia Dunkley um, was, um, you know, only, uh, you know, not too far away from um, a, test entry, a test entry, which would have been really exciting for her on debut. Um, so there was definitely debate about it. Um, but you know, with um, with India putting on, you know, 150 odd for the first wicket partnership, I think that if she had declared overnight, um, England would have looked very stupid indeed. Um, and the, the the test might be um, looking very different right about now in terms of who's kind of on top. Um, so yeah, I think that she was she probably timed it about right, and she let um, England get to a position where now um, you know India is still quite a long way away from avoiding the follow-on. Um, okay, right. Well, yeah. I mean, it seems clear to me that, that England were kind of targeting 400. It looks like in retrospect, obviously they didn't quite get there, but they decided that once Anya was out, you know, let's let's get on with it. Um, now, what I wrote about yesterday. Yesterday, um, I talked about yesterday as being the kind of the, the duel of the dual debutantes. Um, so we had Sophia Dunkley for England uh, making her debut, and of course Shafali Verma for India. Um, Raf, how did you feel about the way that those two got on? Yeah, it was really interesting. Um, lovely to see them both doing well. I think it's um, in some ways they, their two innings were quite different um, because um, I think that Sophia Dunkley's um, was kind of much more measured. Um, Shafali Verma, you know, yes, she did um, kind of see off um, a little bit of swing at the at the start from Anna Shrubsole and she was pay, playing um, defensively right at the start. But then she did what we know that Shafali Verma is capable of doing and kind of took on Catherine Brunt in particular. Um, so quite different innings in some ways. Um, but in other ways, I think that they were quite similar. Um, and the reason I say that is because I think that they were both actually playing in a much more attacking way um, than we're used to seeing in women's test cricket, particularly in recent women's tests. A lot of the criticism has been around the fact that um, when you give women red ball cricket or multi-day cricket, um, they, they go into their shells and they, uh, they suddenly go, oh my goodness, it's a test. I need to bat in a particular way. I need to bat in quite a conservative way. Um, and that's where you get all this criticism about kind of women's test cricket as being quite dull and quite turgid. So what we saw yesterday from Sophia Dunkley and Shivali Verma was, I think, a really um, kind of important moment, a bit of a generational shift going on of going, no, we can actually bat differently um, in test cricket and kind of actually just take our, um, our short our short form game into test cricket and play um, in kind of a, a more of a natural way that's more exciting to watch. So absolutely fantastic um, and really exciting potential for the future, I think. Yeah, I thought they both played very positively. I think that's that's the important thing there. Um, you know that we've perhaps we're seeing an evolution in the way that Test cricket is played yeah. from a more what what you might have seen. I mean, men's Test cricket also evolved. You know, from the Test cricket that I watched in the 1980s, where it was quite slow, and you know, you had people batting at one and over for a hundred overs, and you know, making a century across two days, to something more like the the modern men's game. So I think that's very positive, and I was really impressed in in particular with Shafali Verma. So that's great. Um, now, Ref, Test Cricket is also all about strategy. What's England's strategy going into this day? Because, of course, we're only halfway through the test. Mm -hmm. um, you know, well, possibly, given, given the weather, he looks <laughs> up again nervously. I, think I might be feeling a couple of drops of rain on, on me. But what's England's strategy going forward from here, do you think? 
Uh, well, obviously, um, it's got to be, first of all, um, they want to have the option to make India follow on, especially if some time is going to be lost to rain. India is still, I think it's 59 runs away from avoiding the follow on because it's a four day game. So um, you have to be 150 um, runs or less behind, essentially. Um, so, yeah, um, that will be the first thing is to take five more wickets before India can score 59 more runs. Um, and then as to whether Heather Knight then enforces the follow on, um, um, again, it will probably depend on how much time, if any, is lost to rain. Um, I think that she probably would be inclined to do that because I think that at that point England will be very much on the front foot and looking to kind of ram home their advantage and then potentially might end up having to chase some runs um, on the on the kind of fourth afternoon of this match. Um, but I don't think that she'll be too um, intimidated by that. So, yeah, I think that that's, that's um, going to be the strategy. But who knows because I'm not Heather Knight and... <laughs> As, as we saw yesterday, we don't really have an insight into what she's planning to do. Okay, well, let's go watch some cricket.